Chris, there's a couple other cool things I'd like to show you. Okay. We've been looking at fossils today mainly that are body fossils. Okay. That is the actual remains of the animals themselves. Right. But there's a whole other set of fossils that paleontologists study known as trace fossils. Trace fossils, okay. And trace fossils are preserved behavior. Okay. So a classic example of a trace fossil would be like a dinosaur footprint. So do we get to see some uh, trilobite footprints? Pretty much, that's what okay. we're going to see today. So okay. remember, we're a full 225 million years old than dinosaurs. Right. We're going to be looking at trilobite trackways. Trilobite trackways. Yes, and Let's trilobite burrows. Yeah. Oh boy. And the Cincinnati Inn is actually full of all kinds of trace fossils, not just from trilobites, but from worms and other creatures and other arthropods. But this is actually a trilobite burrow, much oh. probably from our friend Flexicalamine that we saw earlier that was rolled up. Oh, so this is the burrow. This isn't the actual animal. This right. is just, okay. The burrow. So how does a trace fossil like this get preserved? Okay, so what happens is it's actually orientation correctly is this way. Okay. So the trilobite digs a hole, either for food or protection, okay. in a pretty semi-lithified kind of hard mud. So kind that, of like clay. Yeah, that maintains the shape at the okay. bottom of the seafloor. You can imagine stepping into mud, yep. and the minute you remove your foot, it just fills itself back in. Okay. In order to keep this shape for infilling later, it would have to be pretty hard stuff. It digs in, and then sediment flows over it and fills in the hole and casts it. Okay, so it's almost like it's just a little bit different sediment right. in the mud. Yes. And that, that kind of preserves where that hole was. Gotcha. So, just like you would make many different tracks depending on the behavior you were doing, mm -hmm. trilobites do the same thing. And this is a track, you can see oh, some wow. scratch marks there called diplocnites. And this is a... also from a trilobite. So those are its little legs going... Yeah, so instead of burrowing in the sediment, this thing is booting it across the bottom of the seafloor. He's running, or she's running across as fast. Her, the body is up, mm -hmm. it's not dragging, and the limbs are making little scratch marks <laughs> as it goes. That's and, so cool. Yeah, and once again, you can imagine that the sediment would have to be fairly hard to maintain those scratches without sure. losing them. And that once again tells us a bit about what the bottom of the ocean looked like. Very cool. So remember we talked in the collection yesterday that there's two types of fossils. There's the body fossils, which we're going to hunt for now, mm -hmm. but there's also the fossils of behavior, known as trace fossils. Yes. Well, the Cincinnati is full of the record of behavior okay. that we see. And a lot of that records sort of the soft-bodied organisms that are in the community that we don't see preserved as body fossils. Gotcha. So you can look at any kind of rock around here pretty much and find them. And this is a classic example oh, wow. of a series of trails made by an unknown trail maker that are at the bottom of the ocean that are cast in this limestone rock. So this was basically someone, uh, some living thing yeah. moving around at the bottom of the ocean. Yes. And it's preserved so 450 million years ago. That's that like some something. Someone, something. Some, was something weird. Yeah. That's So do we have any idea what this could be? Uh, probably not. I mean, we know that because it's sinuous and it's a trail, that at least it had a sea loam, so it probably is like a triploblastic organism. Okay. Which could be anything above, like worms and above. Okay, so some, okay, so some sort of creep, creepy crawly thing. Creepy crawly thing. That's we don't cool. know exactly what. Um, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome though. I mean, it's this is the this problem is... with trace fossils. We don't I always mean, know. Unless there's morphology, like the Rusophycus we saw yesterday, that helps us to, to narrow it down. Right. It could be snails, it could be worms, it could be who knows. That's really cool. Yeah. 